Hi, I'm Jeff, and I have a tip for you. Our friend Ken in the forums posted a really interesting question about how I can automate the group first functionality. It's a very interesting question, and I'm going to show you how I went about figuring out how to do this. I thought it might be an interesting introduction to some of the capabilities of the browser to help you understand and debug scripts. So let's get into it. First of all, let me show you what this group first does. So let's create a simple visualization. I'm going to have a couple of categories in here. So continent, uh, so country, and then products, and index. And finally, I'm going to add a number. So let's just add revenue. Now I'm just going to peg this to be a table. That's perfect. And in this case, I'm just going to fill the screen. OK, so what does this group first do? Well, let's go into view mode. And if you right click on the measure and you go to sort under more, you can see that there is a group first option. So it's basically the order in which these various hierarchies are here. And you might want to change that sort order. So if I were to set this to country, you can see that country goes first. Now, there's kind of two methodologies here, depending on how you're viewing the dashboard. Uh, let me explain. So if I go back into edit mode, and I look at the metric set, you notice that the order in which the elements are in the metric set is the order that is grouped first. That's basically what's happening. So if you view a dashboard while it's checked out, like I'm doing, it's actually modifying the metric set. Now, once you've checked in the dashboard, it doesn't modify the metric set anymore. Instead, it adds something called an override. And that's really what we want to do. We want to play with that override so that we can get the behavior that we want via a button or a drop down or some other way. So when you're testing this, make sure that you check in the dashboard. First of all, before I do any testing, I'm just going to add a quick button to the screen. And let's go to the click event. And I'm just going to add one line of code, which is the debugger command. And what this will do is it will trigger the browser's debug functions when that button's hit. Uh, this will only catch, by the way, if you have the debug tools open, which in Chrome is F12. So I'm just going to open that up. And remember, as I said, we got to check this in. Otherwise, it's going to modify our metric set, which isn't what we want right now. We want to play with those overrides. So check it in. So I'm checked it in. Now, I want to show you something. Uh, there, You'd have to know this, unfortunately, the object model a little bit. but. If I hit the button, that's going to catch. We can go to the console, and it's this dot parent view dot control. Whoops, that's not it. Parent view dot control. My mic's in the way here. And there's an overrides. So I've opened that up. You can actually look at the variables live to see what's in here. So you can see that there's a metric sets binding override. And right now that's empty, empty array, because we haven't done any overrides yet. I've just viewed the dashboard. Let's resume. Now I can play with the dashboard again. Let's right click. Let's set that sort. And let's tell this to group by continent group first. Say OK. You see it's done that. It's changed the grouping. But because I have this dashboard checked in, it's done an override. So let's hit that button again. Go back to the console, and I'm just going to basically go back to that overrides variable. And now if I expand it, you can see that the array now has an element in it. If you expand that, you can see that it's telling it what adapter to override and what metric set ID to override. And then inside of that, it's basically telling you what's the request. Well, in this case, I believe it's hierarchy overrides. No, nope, that's not it. Sort. Oh, here it is. Sort priority overrides. So there's an array in here, and this is the order. So that's how you set it. You would basically play with these variables. Now you can see there's a lot of stuff in here. And if you're not familiar with it, it can be kind of annoying to rebuild all this from scratch. You have to figure out the object type, instantiate it, fill in all the information. So let me show you a trick that I like to do. Let's go right to the overrides and the metric set overrides specifically. And I'm going to use this thing called JSON, json.stringify. And I'm going to stringify that entire object. So if I do that, uh, let's just call it something. Um, let's just call it override string. 
let's catch it there. So now when I run this, I can actually look at the override string variable. And all this stuff, this is the representation of those variables in string format. So that way I can use this string to bring it back. So watch this. Let's just copy this whole thing. Okay. And at this point, I've got the information I need. So let's close this out. Let's go back into edit. Check out the dashboard. Remember when you want to test this, you want to check it back in. I know I'm broken record, but I'm going to keep saying this. Let's add a new button to the screen to do a test. And under click. There we go. There's that whole object. So what I'm going to do before is just var override over string equals that. So that's going to bring it back, semicolon at the end. And then we just need to set it. So in this case, it's just this dot parent view. And you'll notice that the IntelliSense will give you clues of what's in here. Dot control dot dot overrides. But metric set overrides. And I'm basically just going to set it to be all those objects that we just saved in that string. Now, what I need to do is convert that string back into objects, right? I can't just put that string in there because it'll just be text. So json.parse will restore it as an object. So I can say var overrides equals, I'm basically just going to parse that string. like that. So now, and remember that the, oops, this is the wrong object, sorry. It was metric set overrides. Metric set bindings override, that's the one. Remember that this was an array. So I'm just going to set it to be an array, and the first object is going to be our overrides. That's that. Now I just need to modify that sort order. And you remember that it was just an array of four elements. So let's go a little deeper like we did before. It was overrides. It was the first one. Request. Overrides. Dot sort priority overrides. I'll have to test this to make sure it's all right. And then we just build the array. So I copied it earlier. What that array would look like in this case is just strings telling it which objects. So let's just copy that in right now. Just in one of those. So that'll replace it. And then what we have to do is just update the table. So now that we set the override, I just say table one dot load data. This load data called the refresh, which is something you'd have to know. Now that's all it's going to take for me to do an override for product. I'd basically just copy this, uh, make another button. So let's just do another one for continent for quick testing. Maybe not grab it and resize it. So this is product first. This one's continent first. Let's, now let's go to the click. That in, and I'm just going to replace continent with product here. Okay, and let's hope all my code was right. Remember to check this in. Don't do it in view mode. Okay, now let's group your product first. Great. Now let's do continent first. That's all it takes. So you can see that I used the browser to figure out what was going on, to look at those variables and see the values. Then I did that little cheat to just rebuild all the objects instead of doing it by scratch, and then just change the little piece that I need to. Hope this helps.